Hello everybody, my name is Desuko, and in this video we are checking out the most cursed Bala songs I own. This is day 7, the final day of Desuko Daily Uploads Week, so I figured I would end it with some of the greatest Bala songs of all time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I hope you've enjoyed the daily uploads uh, this week. I certainly have enjoyed creating them, and I hope that I will have some time to do more uh, daily upload weeks like this in the future and get some more content out there and talk about some cool Bala songs. Um, because I have honestly thoroughly enjoyed just being able to ramble about shit that I like doing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I guess we're in this one we're gonna take a look not at the highest quality Bala songs that I have in my possession, like the Trinidad Scorpion or the custom Squid Industries Nautilus. No, instead, we are going to take a look at the Butterfly Comb. The... The... I don't even know what the hell to call this guy. Ooh-wee. The Washerless Tang Pin Mako. And the Speed Channeled $90 Cracker Racket. I think I will save the best for last, that being the Bally Comb. And I will start off with the least cursed one, which is probably going to be this Cracker Racket. The only Kraken I've ever owned. The second Kraken I've ever flipped. And all around, honestly, still a very good Bala song. I talked about the Kraken in a previous video um, this week, kind of just discussing my thoughts on the Kraken as a standard and the Kraken as a modding platform. And this one, I think, is just, like, it just shows that so well. It has an hourglass blade on it. It's not surface ground. The finish on it looks terrible. It has some, I think they're 2.5 handles that literally have holes drilled into them with the drill press. That's not a speed channel. That's a, that's a massacre on my Bala song. Um, it, it, it's, it's just, it's a funny little guy. The, 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 the Cracker Racken that I own is just the silliest of little guys. And I think that that is why it earns a contender. Or, or earns a spot on the list of contenders for the most cursed ballad song that I own. I still love it. It still flips great. The same is not true with the other ones um, in this little collection, but this guy is wonderful. I guess another thing that is up with this one that I haven't talked about yet is the way in which one of the pivot holes is quite literally drilled out. It's like someone took a drill and, like... The little ledge that the screw sits on is just gone. Like, they just drilled it away. So it is physically impossible to tune the tap out of this thing. On one handle, you could tune the bushings on the safe handle. But on the bite handle, it's quite literally impossible to tighten the screws in a way that doesn't, like, fully crank it without it having tap, which I think is just wonderful. Um, best $90 I ever spent in the Balasong community, though, I'll tell you that much. This thing was worth every penny. It's a great beater. It still flips great because it's a Kraken. And it's just, it, it's, it's, it's a funny, it's a funny little guy. Um, so yeah, that is my Cracker Racken, which is the first most cursed. Second off, we have the Mako V2, which this one is horrendously beat. But in general, the Mako V2 is just a very cursed Bala song. It came right after, arguably, the best Bala song that Squid Industries ever created. They just took this, and just took a fat shit all over it, and then started selling it. And <laughs> that's what the Mako V2 is. I'm sorry, Squidmaster, if you're watching this. I really do not like the Mako V2. The Tang Pins pinch you all the time. The G10 spacers just, like, look weird. The the blade, they have the bottle. This was the first one with the bottle opener. But, like, 
without the gills to balance it out, the bottle opener just kind of looks kind of stupid. Um, although this was the first time the Mako had double-sided hardware, as far as I'm aware. Although these are third-party pivots, they got the wacky pivots going on. I guess I can show you guys the, the pivots on this. We got blue and green titanium hardware. This was before uh, Squid started shipping their hardware with two with two sides. This is uh, only when it was one side was a screw. They're, they're all T10 though at least, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, they're faded. They're kind of stripped. They uh, they still got a nice color, I suppose, but <laughs> when I got this, it literally had blue and green and also pink, I think. I think I put pink on it. Um, currently, it just has some normal inked black Mako hardware in it. Um, so yeah, mismatched hardware is how I got this thing. This was uh, from Ted Flips. I don't remember what I paid for it. I can't imagine it was too much. But on my quest to collect the, all of the Makos, I have kind of abandoned. This was definitely a nice investment, and it's just really funny. The blade is just destroyed. It's like someone has dropped it on rocks uh, at least 50 times. It's basically stonewashed at this point. And it has no washers. Um, there are no washers in this Mako because I lost them during disassembly. Not to mention the blade is bent. Um, which is not fun at all. I bet if I tried, I could bend this with my bare hands. Yeah, there it is. I think this immediately made it ten times more cursed. Um, <laughs> there we go, just bend it back. Ooh, I really fucked them up there. Okay, so yeah, Mako V2, another <laughs> very cursed battle song that I own. And then... My Nautilus couldn't take it anymore. Dude just, just did not want to react to these anymore. Okay, last, well not last, second to last, we have the Squiddy that I 3D printed. This was kind of a little project that I got into. Um, what just fell off? Something just fell off of this and I don't know what it was. This was a little project that I got into, kind of after seeing uh, the Tay Flipper, when the Tay Flipper first came out, and I saw Will Hirsch's unboxing of it, and it was like a squiddy, but it was like kawaii or whatever. I was like, that is the cutest thing ever. I need to make something like this immediately. So I fired up my 3D printer, found some random squiddy 3D model, took it into Blender, and I added ears to it. Ears from the Red Panda Studios logo, which you may or may not know, depending on how uh, deep into the Desuko iceberg you are. But yeah, this is my 3D printed Red Panda Studios Squiddy clone, which has a hole drilled out on the bottom on one of the handles, which I'm just going to say is the bite handle. Um, has some great tolerances. Once again, no washers. It has random clone hardware in it. Um, it's a screw. A screw is what fell out of it. But it's still staying together and it's still flipping, so I'm just gonna pretend like nothing happened. Yeah! I 3D printed a couple of these, uh, weird little squiddies, actually. I also made this one, which has a, uh, panda head on it, which flips a little bit better than this one. Um, my initial plans were to add weight pins at the bottom of them uh, to have them flip a little bit better, but unfortunately that did not get very far. Mainly because I was running out of spare hardware from random clones. Um, but yeah, goofy little uh, Tay Flipper squiddy 3D printed clone things that I never had any intentions of selling. Just a fun little project. And I guess also I can kind of share... Uh, the, the Melky, which was a Bala song that me and OX9Flips were prototyping. We're still planning on creating it at some point. Um, these are just the 3D printed test handles that I have. It's kind of like a Nautilus-inspired, um, not 3D printed. These were just so I could test fit. Nautilus-inspired, rounded, 
trainer of some sort that was gonna exist, but it never, it never came to fruition with college going on. And I guess that leaves us, last but not least, with the, the, the butterfly comb, as so eloquently described on the box. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a silly little dude that I got at a magic shop for $20. And I don't regret that purchase, and I am going to tell you why right now. And that is because I got to teach the guy who owned the shop how to do a basic open, and it was just, it was so pleasant, it was so wholesome. I was like, if you're gonna sell Balasong combs, you better at least have, like, a couple tricks to show off with it. Um, so yeah, I showed him how to do a basic open, indoctrinated another human being into the Balasong hobby. This thing is so funny. The comb is, like, abysmally thin. If I try to brush my hair with it, it <laughs> it's not a good comb. And it's just so much handle weight. It has a lot of play, a lot of tap. The washers are, like, a millimeter thick. It has speed holes in it, though, which is nice. Um... At least they tried to take off some of the material, making this thing unbearably, uh, handle-biased. But, yeah. Bally Comb, probably the most cursed Bally song I own. But ironically, a Bally song with one of the best stories that I own. Very nice little thing. I think that is gonna be it for this video. I guess leave down in the comments what you thought the most cursed Bala song that I displayed in this video was. And if you have some uh, cursed Bala songs of your own, feel free to share them in the Discord on my website, or you can go to discord.desuko.gay. You know, give a little story in the comments, maybe. I think it's always the most cursed Bala songs that have the most charm and, like, the, the most story to them. It's just great. Sometimes you gotta own a couple of goofy little guys uh, to go along your favorite Bala songs. And that's gonna do it for the final day of Desuko Daily Uploads Week. I hope that you've enjoyed all of the daily uploads, because I have enjoyed making them, and hopefully I can do a couple more of these in the future. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Yeah! Oh, here's my dog! There's my dog! There's a dog!